Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first TMA virtual briefing of the new year, where we will be previewing the 2023 legislative session of the Illinois General Assembly. My name is Rich Carter. I'm TMA's government affairs consultant, and I'll be the moderator for today's briefing. We're joined by TMA state lobbyist David Curtin, as well as a very special guest, House Republican Leader Tony McCombie of Savannah. Good morning, David and Leader McCombie. Good morning. morning. Great. Well, we're going to spend the next half hour discussing the outlook for legislative action in Illinois House in the coming year and its potential impact on TMA members. Now I'll turn it over to TMA state lobbyist David Curtin, who will introduce our special guest and get her thoughts on the upcoming session of the Illinois General Assembly. At the end of the program, TMA members will have an opportunity to ask written questions of Leader McCombie by typing them into the Q&A tab on the Zoom control panel. David, the floor is yours. Thanks. Well, behind me is a place uh, Representative McCombie knows very well. It's the Illinois House Chamber. And uh, so, um, Leader McCombie, you were um, elected Republican House leader the other day. Congratulations. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you. Um, first, and certainly not to make you guys feel bad, but it's McCombie. Oh, McCombie, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It happens all the time. So, um, I, and I'm sorry, I lost your question. I just wanted to say good morning. Yeah. Well, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you represent a district right across the uh, Mississippi River from Iowa. Uh, what a um, little bit about yourself as far as your uh, uh, tenure in the uh, Illinois House and, uh, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, I'm from Savannah, Illinois, like you said, a small northwestern Illinois uh, river community. Uh, maybe some of your folks that are watching are familiar with Galena, which with this new map is in my new district. So I also now border Wisconsin. Uh, so I'm about 25 minutes south of Galena on the river, a uh, beautiful part of the area. Uh, my new district, uh, well, my old district up you know, in December and beginning of January, went down to the Quad City area, had encompassed four counties. My new district now goes to the east over to DeKalb County and encompasses parts of seven counties. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically born and raised. My mom married an army man, so we were able to move around a little bit uh, until he retired. When I was a sophomore in high school, we moved back to Savannah. Uh, lived in Peoria for a short period of time after graduating from Western Illinois University. And uh, I always say the good ones go home. And so there I'm back here, in, I'm back in Savannah and I really got involved in government. I Right after uh, college, I got into banking and insurance. So really got involved in government because I got involved in the Chamber of Commerce, which uh, put me in a position to join the city council of Savannah. And uh, like many of us that get involved in this business, do it because we've got upset or we want to change something. And my mom was always one put up or shut up. And so here I am. Great. Well, now uh, in your district, have you had an opportunity to visit with small and mid-sized manufacturers uh, around your area? And what do they um, um what are they telling you or what are they, um, um, what's, what's been your feedback? Yeah, luckily uh, in the 71st district that I've represented for the last six years, we were able to get into quite a few different manufacturing, small and large. Uh, and it really comes down to policy, uh, tax policy, workers' comp, uh, those kind of issues. Certainly uh, property taxes are, are big issues. Uh, and like many small towns, uh, small industrial manufacturing settings, we have uh, McLean Fog, uh, hot and cold form plant. We also have LK. So any any uh, uh, water fountain you see around is typically made in Savannah, Illinois. So these are really are some of our biggest, besides our school districts, are our biggest employers able to offer benefits and a, a fair wage. So they oftentimes come to smaller communities because of tax policy, uh, uh, less overhead. And it's getting to the point now that some of them, especially after uh, COVID and all of the changes in the world that we're seeing, um, starting to let go of their third shift and, and downsizing even their operations. But our tax rates continue to go up just like everybody else's and it makes it harder to do business. Energy costs are certainly a huge thing. 
uh, for uh, some of our, we, ha we still have, um, a, well, in Whiteside County, old steel factories uh, that have now, some of them have come back and you have to, you have to melt down at a particular time to save on energy. And uh, when that becomes one of your biggest bills, it makes it very difficult. And here we are in Springfield passing policy that is only going to hurt these small businesses and um, the reliability of energy and the cost of energy. Yeah. And as a House Republican leader, of course, you're concerned about the whole state. And we've got a lot of members in the Chicagoland area who are dealing with those same issues. Um, what sort of legislation do you expect to see um, or get your crystal ball out a little bit? You might uh, we might see uh, in the new General Assembly that uh, directly affects small and mid sized manufacturers. Well, I wish I could give you good news. Uh, two things. One, you probably need to ask Speaker Welch. He probably has a better idea of what's going to be on the calendar since they're in the majority. Uh, but I think uh, if there is any sort of uh, energy bill uh, passed, it, it most likely will not be anything that's going to be helpful or reverse past policy that was passed in the last year or two. Uh, you know, there has been some changes, obviously, uh, different changes with property taxes that uh, not not a, a direct result, but things that could help communities lower. But then we just go ahead and change a policy, put mandates on our schools, on our law enforcement, public safety, that you might be helping in one area, but then they have to increase in another. So your property tax rates continue to go up. So um, we in, in Springfield, probably like many states, don't look at the, the long picture uh, past legislation so we can get a quick pop for um, a, a new station or for our constituents and, and don't think about uh, the policies that we're passing that is going to be detrimental to, to small business and especially to manufacturing businesses. The end result will be there will be a, a decrease in jobs, which means people end up leaving. And, and that's certainly nothing that we want here in Illinois. It's a great state. We're positioned in a wonderful part of the country. And we should be we should be leading uh, manufacturing by far compared to other states. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this past election, it showed that we have a a um, uh, little bit of work to do as far as uh, uh, <clears throat> getting more small and mid-sized uh, uh, manufacturing respected legislators in the uh, in the General Assembly. What um, is there a by uh, everything and will have to be a bipartisan approach if it's going to be done done uh, uh, or something as a benefit for small and mid-sized manufacturers. Uh, what do you see is uh, can be a more bipartisan approach to uh, help uh, benefit manufacturing in Illinois? I would ask that every every business and manufacturer that is watching this today is you get your legislator in your building. Uh, you let them tour. You let them see the faces of the people that are working. You talk to them about tax policy. We have a lot of folks that have uh, not worked in a manufacturing setting, don't understand a manufacturing setting, don't understand the high cost of workers comp property tax, have never been in a small business. So if you want to educate us in the in the House and the Senate, get them in your doors and explain what's going on. Let them see the faces of the people that may not have a job because of policy we pass. Well, that's great because that was, yeah, that was my next question. How can we assist doing that? And um, And those members who get out of their offices and into the um, into the companies, and then they uh, they see what's actually being done, and they see the effects of their policies. Uh, that's that's pretty. Um, it's it's a lot more important in their vote than just uh, someone giving them a briefing or an analysis of what uh, they should be. Yeah, absolutely, and I'll just give you an example for me that I got. I was very lucky. Uh, I was I was elected in 2016, and um, at that time, uh, the uh, I have Cordova nuclear plant, and so we have a, it's a huge economic impact to our region, of, of course, let alone the reliable energy. Uh, we toured that after the vote, and I could tell a senator there was just something kind of off after he was after we were done with our tour, and all of a sudden it dawned on me. Um, I said, You voted no on that bill. And he said, I did, but I wouldn't have had I been here before. 
So that, that really showed me right then and there that I need to get into every sort of setting that I can get into, whether it's a farm, whether it's a, a processing plant, whether um, it's, it is a, a, a small manufacturer uh, making small parts for Ford Motor Company, whatever it is. Um, get in there and meet the people and uh, talk to the, talk to them because if you don't do that you're not going to know and then you have deniability when we're sitting here in our seats and you can say well nobody told me nobody nobody showed me nobody educated me um, because legislators sometimes don't take that initiative uh, which is unfortunate so I can tell you in this position I will certainly push our Republican House members um, to get in their district. We have we have several new members around the state. I will push them to, to do that. Um, but I ask, open the doors and invite them. Because when I first ran as well, you know, uh, my assistant in, in Savannah would call and they're like, oh, we're not getting, we, we don't get involved in politics. And she's like, well, we're not calling to have a political discussion. She's coming in her official capacity and actually cannot talk politics. Yeah. So keep the politics out of the visit and just educate yeah. us. Yeah, and we have a we do have a great program. Rich Carter does run a great program to try to do that. Um, and some of the uh, sometimes they're successful. Sometimes they they uh, they feel like they have to uh, you know clean up their place and uh, have their best on to uh, host a legislator. But it, really, the legislator just wants to get in there and uh, and uh, learn about what they're what they're doing and uh, and ask you know kind of look them in the eye and say what you know what problems are you really having. Uh, rather than uh, um, quoting press releases or something like that. Um, well, let's see, before we go to questions, um, how would you, or what would you like our members uh, just generally, is there any, are there any uh, general messages that you would like our TMA members to know uh, before the uh, new session? Um, well, it has already kicked off, but uh, really gets underway. <laughs> I think it's going to be important for uh, in, in Illinois, being in the minority, we have 40 out of 118 seats in the, in the House. Uh, so we will really be pushing for a seat at the table. Uh, you know, there's a lot of preconceived notions not to get political, but there's a lot of preconceived notions about Republicans. And uh, we're going to work really hard at having a seat at the table. We have a great group of members who you know range from doctors, farmers, realtors, uh, uh, attorneys, and uh, we want to be at the table. We have a lot of insight and knowledge to give uh, with us having some seasoned members. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of new folks here and who have never, um, never had to be hungry, uh, whether it came to uh, their checkbook or their bellies. So uh, <laughs> we're really going to be pushing um, to have a seat at the table, uh, hold uh, our our friends on the other side of the aisle accountable, and hopefully offer solutions that I'm more than well I'm more than happy for them to steal and run, um, so we can actually have some good policy this year and look down a, a long term plan. Great. And before you turn back over to Rich, uh, just wanted to make a comment that when I'm lobbying and you're seeing me run around there in the Capitol. I do when I do talk to legislators about the differences between the big manufacturers and the small and mid-sized manufacturers. I kind of see the lights in their eyes uh, on some of the issues that we deal with that are, um, you know, contained in some bills that um, might be uh, bipartisan. And so, uh, so I think there's an educational thing going on uh, too that's uh, that's really good. But, yeah, and, don't, and I would just say, don't assume people know. Um, I've been here six years, right? And in this new position, um, I have not been on any any Medicaid working groups, any uh, health committees or anything like that. And one of the biggest parts of our budget is health care. Um, so now I'm like not only trying to learn this job, but I'm trying to learn that piece because that's going to be a huge part of, of, of the year as well. So don't assume we know anything. Um, because it may not be our expertise. And, and that's not bad, um, but you get used to being in the same committee for all the years that you're here. You become an expert in the field. Um, and we need to know a lot about, uh, a little about a lot of things. So so um, I think it's great if you can get people into your, and, and then they know their district, get them into your business and let them learn more about you and the people that they're serving. Great. Rich? 
Great. Well, thanks, David. Um, now it's time for questions and answers with TMA members. Those of you who are on your computers or if you're using the mobile app, you can type your question and submit it through the Q&A tab on the Zoom control panel. I'll read the questions and ask the leader to answer them. In the meantime, I'll ask Leader McCombie the first question that was pre-submitted by a TMA member. The question is, earlier this month, a Senate Democrat from Chicago announced he was drafting legislation to revive the progressive tax constitutional amendment that failed miserably in 2020. Governor Pritzker appeared to be lukewarm to its revival, but with Ken Griffin gone, there's no one to match the governor's spending if he wants to ram it through again. Do you think the Democrats will actually bring a vote to put it on the ballot again? And if they do, what do you think the chances of passage will be? Leader? <laughs> I absolutely think they will. Absolutely. Uh, which the people spoke regardless of the amount of money. So we will certainly be educating folks, getting people out. Um, your voice, if people did not think their voice mattered, um, it certainly did during um, some of the overreaching policies during COVID. Uh, people spoke up, people are, are, are more educated. This, this, you can put all the money in the world on it and the people will show up and, and, and shut that down. Even Iowa now um, is, is going to, has gone to a flat tax. Uh, our, our way that we tax people is the only uh, non-regressive system we have in place. And here they wanna change that. Um, so we will certainly be uh, working hard on that. And you're going to hear from the House Republicans on Tuesday morning just about this topic. That's great. Thanks, Leader. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, please type your question in the Q&A tab on the Zoom control panel. We do have another uh, question submitted from a TMA member. The question is, during his first four years, Governor Pritzker pushed through significant anti-business legislation that puts Illinois manufacturers at a disadvantage with our competitors in neighboring states. What should TMA members be concerned about most from the governor and legislators the next four years? Leader? Energy cost, reliability of energy. It is a, a very popular topic. Um, and to think that we are going to uh, <laughs> uh, be able to have our businesses open when they can't turn on the lights uh, is going to be a real problem. Great. Well, we know that we, uh, you know, we, we dealt with CJA, the Clean Energy Jobs Act, the last two years, and it was pretty tough on our members. Do you think is something else coming? Do you think that's going to be even worse? Uh, well, I don't think they're going to. Yeah, possibly. Absolutely. Uh, they could up the, the years. Uh, they could, um, you know, there's a lot of push on the federal side. They could change the dates. Um, they could be looking at uh, closing down the nuclear facilities. Uh, I mean, that might be a push. I'm certainly not trying to scare anybody, but um, not only is this a state issue, this is a federal issue. So um, Energy is a is a popular thing right now. Uh, so, if they think it's going to be a topic that's going to win elections, unfortunately, that's what's going to be run, and that's what's going to hurt you. Great, thank you. All right, we do have a question uh, submitted from a TMA member. The question is: With all you're seeing, is there any chance that Illinois will add another nuclear plant to bolster our sustainable energy sources? Leader. Well, I sure hope so, and I like it down south. Uh, Illinois, uh, I would say prior to this, and maybe we still are exporting energy today, uh, but that will end soon. It, Illinois can be an exporter of energy. We certainly need it in, uh, if we're not allow um, coal and other forms of energy uh, and rely on um, our renewables, we know that will not work. Uh, so uh, I would love it. There's a lot of talk about uh, the micro nukes. Uh, so I think you'll see some conversation on that. The issue always is on the federal side, what are you going to do with the nuclear waste? Um, so hopefully the, the feds come up with that option as well to help us. But um, I'm all for it. I, I think uh, the working class and the, uh, the, the laborers are more than happy to build us one. And uh, if we could put that down south, I think that'd be great. Great. Thanks, Leader. Again, if you'd like to ask a question, please type your question on the Q&A tab on the Zoom control panel. All right, we do have another question submitted from a TMA member. The question is, Republicans build the new session still in the super minority, and the numbers for the House grew even worse. As the new leader for House Republicans, how can you get anything done when super majority Democrats can do whatever they want with any check from the opposing party? Leader? 
Yeah, the map that was drawn was certainly uh, probably the most gerrymandered in the in the dis in this nation. Uh, and I talked about that in my inauguration speech. They'll strongly disagree, but when it's drawn to have 78 um, hard Democrats compared to Republicans, that right there is an issue. Um, but like every map in the last two maps, uh, Republicans have lost. The, the party in Illinois uh, is in control of the map and the lines. Uh, so what we do is we're just going to have to be better on our messaging um, and be very targeted to bring balance back to Illinois. And that's by putting butts in seats. And so we're going to do that um, a little bit at a time. And uh, in the meantime, while we do only have 40, uh, we're going to be very engaged with our, our, our uh, friends on the other side of the aisle. Uh, there's some folks that we can negotiate with. There are some folks that we can deal with um, and that understand the real world. And uh, those are the folks that we'll be sitting at tables with, inviting them to um, our solutions. And uh, we want to govern and uh, we want to help the Democrats govern because sometimes they don't do it as well. That's great. Thanks, Leader. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of questions and we've run out of time. So um, before we leave, Leader, uh, do you have any closing thoughts for TMA members? No, I just want to say thank you for having me. Um, don't give up hope on Illinois. Uh, this is still the greatest place to live. Save a few policies. Uh, so engage, um, engage your, your staff, engage your families um, that are working in your facilities and ex explain even to them. Um, what the policies are so so they can help us bring balance to Illinois. Let them use their voice too. Thanks, Leader. Well, yeah. that will do it for today's uh, virtual briefing uh, where we explore the issues that will impact TMA members in the new session. I want to thank Leader McCombie for joining us today along with TMA State Lobbyist David Curtin for leading a wonderful discussion. And of course, we want to thank all of our TMA members who took time out of their day today to join us. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Goodbye.